All right, you are still watching Ways. Canada's Agriculture Day is on February 15th, and we are um, deliciously excited to celebrate in the best way possible by eating good um, agricultural products and acknowledging farmers. Um, can you believe that Canada is the fifth largest exporter of agricultural and agri product food in the world? This alone makes Canada's Agricultural Day unique and so important to every one who consumes um, agricultural products, allowing us to celebrate the farmers who produce them. Hey, <laughs> Canada! <laughs> You know, we said we are farmers, so we have to we have to celebrate <laughs> ourselves. But I mean, farming is one um, career, mm -hmm. or would I call it one business that? Oh my God, it takes a lot of patience. Yes, yes, yes. And you, you know, for something as important as farming, because without food, you right, you can't you can't survive, and that food cuts across. So mm -hmm. whether it's beets, um, cash, yeah. I mean, crop, crop beets, um, animal, whatever type of farming, mm -hmm. you know. Everything is hinged on food. I always say jokingly that any business you want to do right now, if it is related to food, you understand, you are very sure of, as, I mean, you're very sure of patronage. So, yeah. I mean, this is one important part of human existence, agriculture. And I don't understand why a country mm. that has so much um, arid land that is blessed with mm -hmm. land that can bring multiple yields, we're not taking okay. how can canada and all of these places be so as they are being celebrated we should be celebrating our oh, own so because again so, yeah. yes because nigeria is also blessed you mm -hmm. know we have the the land we have everything but we don't you know so sometimes when i see these kind of days I, it just <laughs> it just breaks my heart that because we we truly can um produce what we consume we have the market we have the land we have everything so what's stopping us this actually reminds me of the debates we used to do when I was in primary and secondary school. I always say farmers are better than doctors, mm. you know. And I always take, take the side of farmers because, I like you rightly said, without food, how will we survive? Without farmers, doctors who cannot exist. Do you know what? We're not, we're not talking produced. about food. Yes, now. Not just food now. Your clothes are made from cotton, you know. Everything. So, and cultural cuts along a very long span of survival. There are so many things that are very that, that are bent on agriculture. Everything. And in Nigeria, I think we, we need to start taking advantage of, like you rightly said, the arid land that we have. We don't maximize it. I don't know. I don't know why. Even your cosmetics, your whatever, you everything, know? your drugs, What? where does it come from? Um, Isi, what do you want to say about agriculture? <laughs> okay. Um, agriculture is something that we we started learning about when we were in primary school as far back as you know primary school but we didn't understand the importance of it till we became adults so yes our culture is so important in our in our in our daily survival but we do not um tap into the resources that we actually have in nigeria to um grow the industry and I think it cuts across the, the types of agriculture we have, which has to do with livestock, um, arable, um, what's it called, um, the, vegeta the, vege the vegetation crops that we have as well. We do not work with what we have currently, but I think if we pay more attention to what we are supposed to pay attention to in agriculture, will be able to grow the the industry and give uh, cognizance to it the way it deserves. Absolutely. So on that note, Isi, what did you find for us in the news today? Okay, my news is on <laughs> emotions are running high, actually. Just like uh, Chinelo said earlier, that a lot of things are currently happening in Nigeria that you know we have to keep our heads up. Um, the topic that actually caught my attention was um, three feared killed as residents stage protest over scarcity of Naira notes. Hmm. So <clears throat> this is so important, you know, because I went out this afternoon and I tried to get some fruits, but I couldn't buy fruits because the Houseman stated that he didn't have, he wouldn't collect the old notes. 
So imagine people who are under this kind of pressure every day, wanting, they don't have the access to technology because they are not tech savvy and they want to buy things and they cannot afford to buy these things. And here they are in um, Edo State currently. Today, there was a riot in Edo State because of this, not only in Edo State, because of the Naira notes um, scarcity, but also in Delta State. So you see, like they say in uh, back in the days, they would say, um, Bendel, no, they carry last, basically. So yes, Bendel number one, we've preceded the mark again, and we are out there again, making some noise and causing a lot of mayhem because we want our notes. I haven't seen a situation whereby um, a country cannot have access to its legal tender. Nigeria keeps hitting the bar in making things difficult for her citizens because we've practically be in queue for practically everything we can actually think about, ranging from NIN, BDN, POS, fuel, if you just name it. I think it's only air that Nigerians haven't queued to breathe in currently. But um, I would, I, I totally understand that there are some, you know, hidden uh, agenda basically in respect of this. But I think there should have been a better way to go about this bearing the fact that when two elephants are fighting, which in this case is CBN and uh, and uh, the politicians or CBN and Supreme Court, they should have found a way to go about this in a proper way that would not, you know, bite the Nigerian populace it, so hard. Mm, they, you know, it's interesting how you're mentioning uh, this. I mean, Cash now, right now is currently king. Mm in actual fact you know how so even right now governors mm -hmm. right because again the court order came out today yeah. saying that uh, the um the supreme no. court still holds the fact that cbn should suspend mm -hmm. this um and, and maintain that the old notes remain legal tender mm -hmm. so i was seeing a video of dapwa biodo on his way on a campaign trail then he now said he stopped by a field station because he heard that they were rejecting um, oh, nice. the old Naira note, and he insisted that the, the, the businesses should collect the old Naira notes. So the question I'm having is, why all this rancor, right? Because now, governors are t instructing businesses to, to not mm -hmm. um, stop the mm -hmm. collection of the old oh, notes. Yes. CBN has told banks where these businesses will take the money to. Mm -hmm. So, like, you know, the confusion is too much in the air. And I think, Precisely. you know, for me, I would just appeal to Nigerians. This is not the time to pick up arms because what you're doing yeah. is you're just scratching the surface. If you want to solve a problem, solve it from the root. That's this is clearly a, a, a problem of leadership, mm -hmm. right? It's a leadership problem. We've always yeah. said it, but this is it's just, it's just, you know, like re-emphasizing the fact that Everything rises and falls on leadership. And now we're seeing why it's very important that we, we vote in the right people into positions of power. But, Chinele, uh, your story. I hope that. I just really hope that these people that are carrying out this protest and all of destroying all of these things really know or they come to the realization that that's not actually the solution to mm. all of this. However, Precise. on this whole violence note as well, um, it was reported that today in Aguda Market, Surulere local government area, there was an attack on Deputy Governor Princess Oifusi's campaign train. So that's the current um, Deputy Gubernatorial candidate for Labour Party. And um, I don't know if we have that video. It was quite a bloody one where the guy, I think he was stabbed in his head or something and he was literally bleeding. And then I'm asking myself, so does it mean that people cannot just go ahead and continue their campaign in peace? Because we know that, yes, that's market is dominantly a, a an apc you know um what do i call it now the, the, they are apc members or there are people that support apc but then what happened to freedom so does it mean that other parties can't go ahead and do their campaign because they know that it's dominantly if it's an apc dominated area i don't think that this is this is fair at all <laughs> it's so interesting that so when i did a vox pop for a a, a company and they mm. were talking about you know the naira whatever so by the time we got there people immediately they saw cameras they came you know they had called the market leader that was not even there they said no 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 what are they doing here so there is a network right 
And because if you had, if they had listened to the audio from that woman's video, she was saying that even the alloger said you can't come into this market. That this is an APC state. The, the, the only the, yeah, it's very sad. Um, you see, the only thing I want to say to people is, you see, whether you like it or not, mm. right? Tempers will flare. My own is that just try as much as possible to be safe. To be safe. Sure. Because the truth is, um, some people have taken certain things as mm -hmm. um, yeah. like it is their birthright. Yes, they're entitled it's to an it. Thank you, it's an entitlement. That's what I'm looking for. All right, in the light of the same violence, because again, this is the period, this is mm, the season. Yes. And again, don't forget that because of all of these things happening, people are agitated, people are apprehensive, people are tense, people are afraid. So again, some people, when they are afraid, it's either they fight mm, or they fly. Exactly. You know, yes. so that is so that is the yeah, right. that is what is happening. So when you see attacks like this, it is as a result of panic. I don't know what to do. Mm. Ha! They are winning. They are this. <laughs> they are that. You see things like that happening. But again, they said a um, an aide to the gubernatorial candidate for um, PDP, uh, Dapo um, Sarumi, um, um, sorry, Dapo Sarumi's aide was shot dead, right? The police um, state have commenced an investigation into the death of Toin Adeniji, one of the aides of the prominent PDP, oh, he's a chieftain, sorry, mm, okay. uh, Chief Dak Dapo Sarumi. Um, this guy was 47 years old was reportedly shot dead by suspected cultists mm. in a Gege area of Lagos State. It was gathered that the disease was shot at right in front of his house at Oyewale Road, Agege, when the gunmen invaded the area and shot him at close range. So, I mean, these are the kinds of things that we've seen over the years when it comes to our politics. Yeah. When people are desperate, you know, they take to violence, they yeah. take to killings, they take to that. Um, so I'm just saying to anybody... Be careful, you know, watch your, Lingo. you know, because again, mm -hmm. Nigeria hasn't gotten to that point where if one person dies, we all come out to say no, <laughs> you know, we, we, we just move on like nothing happened. Yeah. So if, by all means, if you can, this is the time to really be very vigilant, you know, pray too, pray because prayer is very important, but be very vigilant and be careful, be calculated, you know, be strategic about your support for whichever candidate that you're supporting. Okay, so on that note, to take a break, I want us to discuss this um, school crisis in Chrisland. Stay with us. We'll be right back.